Do you guys remember when I told you to back every Kickstarter project because they're all brilliant? No? Well, that's a shame because that's one of my favorite videos, even if the audio does sound like I'm recording from inside an air vent. Well, apparently, if you keep throwing truckloads of money at thousands of people, one of them eventually makes something worthwhile. By the way, y'all ain't ever getting Star Citizen, so you might as well just play this. Night in the Woods is an adventure game designed by the same people who made Pop Tropica. And since they killed Flash, you can't prove me wrong, so don't even try. In Night in the Woods, you play as May, a girl who comes back from college to her hometown of Possum Springs to learn that everyone has turned into furries. To fit in, May becomes a cat furry. And if you're me, she also really sucks at bass. May arrives late at night in Possum Springs, a small town so lame that even Amtrak won't run rail to it. But no one picks her up at the bus station. The station attendant blackmails her for soda before he lets her leave. And then she has to walk home through the spooky woods at night. But she didn't spend the night there, so this game should be called 15 Minutes Passing Through the Woods. But May has been playing too much Assassin's Creed and breaks her neck trying to do a leap of faith. She gets rescued by her cop aunt and comes home and yells at her dad for straight up not remembering to pick her up. Legitimately, May should be a hell of a lot madder than she really is. The next day, May meets up with her old friend Greg, who pretty much rules. This man is like vibrating. Greg has a boyfriend named Angus, and uh, he's a bear, of course he is. We meet Angus, or as I call him, the Ice Man. This motherfucker has ice in his veins. He's a stone cold son of a bitch, and he's coming for your husbands. We also meet Bee, an alligator trying her best to get lung cancer so she doesn't have to live in Possum Springs anymore. They have band practice. It goes fine uh, until it doesn't. Afterwards, they go out for pizza, and just like every famous band, they eventually find a severed arm on the ground. Poke it with a stick. This is very important for evidence. The not Buzzkill shows up and stops you from poking the arm. Because May tampered with evidence, she gets three years in jail with a $12,000 fine. But because her aunt is a cop, she lets her go. This town is riddled with corruption. B and Greg and Angus are going to a party in the woods, and May asks B if she can drive them, which she agrees to. While you're on your way home to get ready, you get stopped by the police. Is this some kind of a shakedown? I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you. Is that a threat? B drives the gang out to the party in the woods where May engages in such unchristian activities like underage drinking and guitar listening. The combination of these two creates an unholy being that possesses her. They know what happens when someone gets possessed by a demon. I'm not sure what happened here. My notes just say Angus definitely fucks. You're in the woods, but you're still not spending the night. This game should be called Several Hours in the Woods After Sunset. B drives May home, I guess just abandoning Greg and Angus in the woods. Are they the ones spending a night in the woods? May forgets B's mom is dead. How embarrassing. Do you think this family has like some sort of genetic critical memory issues? May starts having very annoying nightmares. These are all very important, but I will not talk about them again. In this one, she takes a baseball bat to a big metal bird sculpture or something. Now you get to spend a few days exploring the town. Go stargazing in the middle of the day. Listen to terrible poetry. Create a massive rat infestation. Talk to a little kid about her lame interests. You can talk with your mom, who really wants to know why May dropped out of college, and with your dad, who doesn't give two shits why May dropped out, and hang out with Greg and B. Greg and May decide to do some crimes and break into the old abandoned food donkey. At least I think it's a crime. If you filmed it and put it online, you would be called Urban Explorers. That is a bland as fuck logo. When they get in there, they take a giant bunny head. Only three things left in the entire store, and this is one of them. What eagle-eyed repo man missed that? If you choose to hang out with B, you get a drama-heavy story about a young woman going nowhere fast, struggling with maintaining her family store and taking care of her ailing father. Or, if you hang out with Greg, you get a series of mini-games assembled into the vague figure of a story. Oh shit. Oh god, I killed him. He's dead. May and B go to the mall. May describes her horse fantasies. They steal some things. May damages a priceless Alexander Calder sculpture. I'm seeing a pattern here where May destroys large art installations. Then they return all the things they stole after waterboarding the mall. A good time was had by all. May meets Greg at a beat up car, but when May touches the car battery, she gets electrocuted. There, she meets the supreme deity of this world. My child, it is not your time. You have been charged with a divine quest. You must bear the one ring to the fires of Mount Doom. I have been sent back until my work is done. Then we assemble a big trash robot that takes up the entire sofa. Angus gets home and takes it about as well as can be expected, which is pretty good considering that he has now seeded the entire couch to a pile of trash and a leaky car battery. By the way, that battery should be completely dead. There was a tree growing through that car. B takes May to work, but doesn't pay her. And then we get locked in the basement. This was not an enjoyable evening. The next minigame is literally knife fighting Greg in the woods on a log. Have you ever heard of tetanus? Then Greg gets all introspective and asks if he's a good person. 
dude, you just stabbed me like 40 times. So yeah, probably. Then go to Harfest, be in a grade school production of The Crucible, and then the game like clutches its temples and remembers it has to do the main plot. After everyone else walks like 10 feet away, May witnesses an abduction in the middle of the town square. We chase the guy to the edge of town, but May is out of shape, so he gets away. And the police don't want to investigate. Big surprise, May thinks that she saw a ghost instead of like, you know, a much more realistic abduction. Like, ghosts are not the first explanation you should jump to. It's probably not in the top four. But I mean, you have to be pretty ballsy to take a kid from the middle of town in the middle of a big town event. So I mean, yeah, sure, I guess. Go to the library with B to research instances of ghosts in Possum Springs. May finds three all on the same page of microfiche. That's three clues. If it's good enough for the Hardy Boys, it's good enough for this child abduction case. Let's get going. The first clue is that someone saw a ghost in the forest at Lover's Peak. That's like nothing to go on at all. Why is this even newsworthy? Angus decides to humor us. But when we get out to the park, we actually see a creepy guy watching us from the woods. So, you know, probably a pervert. Then May has another dream. We meet God and he's a bit of a dick. Dude, you came to me. None of this cryptic mystic man nonsense. Tell me who killed Kennedy, goddammit. B invites you to a party an hour and a half away. No, no. Are you kidding me? No. Here we are. Go into the basement of this club and do some lame dancing. Then we out B as a business owner, which immediately shames her in front of the other college socialists. She runs away and May leaps across the rooftops to track her down, then fails another leap of faith. B tells her she really wishes she could have gone to college. They make up, it's all good. Meanwhile, Greg and May decide to abandon their creation in the woods. This is exactly what turned Frankenstein's monster evil, you guys. But enough of that character development nonsense, it's time to pretend to move the plot forward. So follow up on another clue at the Winchester Mystery House with Greg. Get beat up by an owl, see a freaky black goat painting in the attic, get chased by security. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Oh shit. May decides she's had enough of this and decides to just go hiking in the woods to her death. This is what the kids call no plans, just vibes. Luckily for her, when she gets out there, she sees a group of cultists amputate a guy's leg. Then out of nowhere, she decides to gasp. One of the cultists immediately outs her. Fucking eagle eye over here. The gang runs away, but May keeps skipping her cardio so she can't outrun them. Then she gets shot. The gang, plus Germ, regroups at Greg and Angus's apartment, where Angus is making brownies and lasagna. Angus is the coolest guy. He makes brownies, makes lasagna. This man does it all. And they still order pizza. Angus, you don't have to put up with this. It turns out May is still alive. She just fell down into a ravine. She limps home where she's found by a bunch of churchgoers and taken to the church. Take her to a hospital. Then they start having this ad hoc funeral. Does anyone want to say a few words around this still alive person? Ah, oh, May was such a good girl. We all like May. Take her to a doctor if you like her so much. Then May shows up at the apartment after breaking out of the church and then walked all the way across town without anyone noticing because people are the worst. Those people were not going to help me. They all decide to spend the night at Greg's to avoid the murder cult. Then May finally opens up to be about why she really left college. She wasn't able to associate with her peers or environment, perceiving them as only shapes. May, you're an oval in two triangles. If I were you, I'd be careful about who I call a shape. But this indicates that she has some sort of dissociative disorder, and she was going to a doctor who didn't have his ICD-10, so she really wasn't receiving good treatment. B decides to fall asleep with a lit cigarette in her mouth. Everyone is stupid except me. May decides she needs to go down to the spooky mines to see what's up, because curiosity killed the cat. When May gets there, she's faced by a silent and terrifying specter. Then the gang shows up and straight up shoots him with a crossbow. I don't know what you thought was going to happen, guy. You live in an extremely rural area in the United States. I think free guns were in the stimulus package. The gang chases the man through the mines. Don't go into a mine with a lit cigarette. This is what the world would look like without OSHA inspectors. They reach a giant chasm with a bunch of cultists on the other side. How did this guy get over? Did this motherfucker jump it? What the fuck are you all doing down here? What even is this stand up at the Redneck Apollo? If you find yourself economically isolated after industry shifts towards urban centers, you might be a redneck. If you start losing your jobs and defaulting on your mortgages as a result of economic insecurity, you might be a redneck. If you choose to take drastic measures, like maybe sacrificing people to a chthonic entity that lives deep below the Earth's surface, you might be a redneck. To solve their financial crisis, the town decides that they should sacrifice teenagers to a chthonic entity named the Black Goat. 
instead of hosting a film festival, like a normal town would have, you know, at least tried first. It was either deal with our congressman or the black goat, and we chose the one that demanded fewer virgin sacrifices. So what, you just drag people down here to kill them? Whoa, 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 whoa. We don't like that word here. What's up with the PC police? Uh, we prefer the term person of former life. They say in the game their economy still sucks. The black goat can't even keep the Italian place open. Gentlemen, I have the solution to your problems. Have you ever heard of meth? With their financial problems solved, the cultists let the gang go. I guess they know the police in this town are either too corrupt or too lazy to actually do anything about them. So yeah, sure, I guess. Then a guy jumps them. Oh wait, you forgot your keys. Angus kills them with the elevator, but that creates what we in the mining business call a cave whoopsie. This leaves them completely trapped underground where they slowly starve to death. Except Angus immediately notices air coming from somewhere and single-handedly guides them to safety. May has a stroke or something and meets the black goat, but it can't even communicate. Wait. They were complaining about immigrants, but the murder cult is supporting the black goat, who doesn't even speak English. He's taking good sacrifices from hard-working American monsters, like the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. They come out of a well in Germ's backyard. They ask Germ if he can seal the well, and he says he can get dynamite. You know, Germ, that would have solved a hell of a lot of our problems a hell of a lot earlier. Everyone kind of feels bad about murdering that guy. Except, of course, for Angus, who will smoke any motherfucker that sweats him. The next day, everything is great. May finally opens up to her mom about why she dropped out of school. Her dad decides to unionize the grocery workers. A taco place? I guess the black goat actually does work. Then we meet the gang for band practice. You know, we just killed like 20 guys. Technically, we didn't kill them. Germ did. With the dynamite. I guess that works for me. But this still leaves us with a lot of questions. Why did they misspell possum? How did this guy actually get over the fence while carrying that kid? Why did they cut that arm off if they were just gonna throw it all into the pit anyway? And where are May's neighbors after you trapped the cultists? And I thought I was a cat, so what the hell is this thing? And who actually spent a night in the woods? Wait a second, it all makes sense now. Severed limbs? Oh my god. The one pulling the strings the whole time is the only creature we've actually seen spend a night in the woods. It was you, wasn't it? You were pulling the strings the whole time. You were entombed at the food donkey, lost and forgotten. But finally, you were able to use enough severed limbs to create a golem of yourself, so that now you can rise up and consume the flesh of the mortal world. You know what? Forget it. Let's just have band practice. Okay.